Hey, Brandon. Yo, brother. How's it going? Uh, well, I'm warmer than you are. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm inside of a vehicle. You sound chilly. That's funny. I'm actually pretty chilly, but I'm also getting dressed if I can walk outside to smoke a cigarette. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, I've also been fucking freezing for like two weeks, it feels like, so. Yeah, it, it got cold up here in Washington, but it's it's warmer than it is down there in Colorado. Even when it snows here, it's warmer than it is in Colorado. Yeah. Kind of nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've never even uh, been to Washington that I can remember. It's I've beautiful. been wanting to fucking drive out for a long time. If I had any loved ones out here, you know, it might be worth yeah. sticking around, you know, but everybody, everybody I love is either in Boulder or Chapel. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That fucking ruins it. Yep. Might so, I came up. an idling company work vehicle. Heck. <laughs> People have talked to me in the last couple of days. It it, it kind of helped, you know. Yeah. I mean, I I I, I miss Miss Peaches, you know, and I miss Tabby, and I miss you. I miss yeah. I miss a lot of people though, even some of them that are pissed off and hate me, and even a couple of the dudes who punched me. Like I'd never done them anything wrong, ever. Although, out of all the people that hit me, the one that, uh, the only one I really want to see put away is Derek. What he did was uncalled for, and to find out that he's a child molester on top of that, like, that, that fucks my head up. Yeah. What, uh... I guess I don't even know, Derek, or what happened. Wait, Derek being Bear? No, this guy's name is Derek Apicotta. Bear, he... He don't have time, and JoJo don't have time. I mean, they... Yeah. Actually, JoJo, I, I was looking up all the slander against me, and they slandered shit out of her, too. Tried claiming she was me. I'm not doing well. I mean, every moment of every day, I miss the people that I love. When I'm around them, I don't feel like that the whole time. But, like, you know, being able to see them for, for an hour a week even, you know, consistently would, would help. Being able to Being able to afford to go to all the appointments that the courts wanted me to go to would have Why are they so cruel, Brandon? I don't know. A lot of good people... It's a fucking damn fact that everybody's fucking cruel, though. Yeah, myself like, as well. You know, I... Yeah, yeah. Not intentionally, and when I am intentionally, it's in defense. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't want to have to defend myself defense, that way. I just want to be good or, to people. Or even uh, environmental freaking conditioning, you know. At some point or another, I feel like I like am, am much, uh, you know. Fuck every time I get hurt in one way or another, it, like it fucking changes me, you know. Changes me to be quicker to fucking draw myself and fucking everything that I have in, you know. Fucking, I don't know. It's like, how do, you, how do you open up to people that you feel like they're just going to fucking hurt you? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> the thing for me I is... Mean, I mean, like, like, like you get hurt in real life, you <laughs> hit your hammer with a fucking... You hit your other finger with a hammer, you're going to fucking attract it and hold it in, you know? Same thing with everything. Well, I, I don't... 
I don't get people. I don't understand why they make the excuses for cruelty that they do. Like my aunt, she had some uh, police in her neighborhood telling everybody to stay indoors. And I, I heard about it all the way here in Tacoma. So the first thing I did was try to get a hold of my aunt to make sure she's all right. And after doing so, it registered to me that that's not something she would do. Like, she didn't give two shits when, when Natalie died and I was pasted all up over the news and all of that stuff. Like, I miss too many people. Like, when I, when I hurt my back, you know, that was, I trusted Josh, you know, I trusted him not, first of all, not to bring his couch out there because I needed that space to work in, but I also trusted him not to have the lights on at four in the morning. I trusted him not to be playing video games with the ghetto blasting. you know, I trusted him to, to follow the rules out there so we wouldn't get kicked out, and he didn't follow the rules. And afterwards, I was still trying to be nice to him. I was still trying to be his friend. Yeah. Which, I mean, fuck, that was, you know, that was, that was a hard fucking earned, uh, hard earned fucking situation at that point. Yeah. Very hard earned, you know. Obviously, you know. Well, yeah, you and Veronica helped move that son of a bitch out there. Well, hell, I would have fucking, I would have helped more, honestly. Fuck, I wish I would have helped to fucking not fucking let you fuck up your back, you know? Well, the... Because, I mean, I don't know, I've told you before, but I watched my older brother fucking hurt his back, and, I mean, he virtually crawled into a hole and became a recluse and fucking, you know, now he lives literally in his own mental shell, you know? See, and I'm trying not to do that, but they keep putting them yeah. medications in me that do that to me, and I explain yeah. to them that it's the medications that do that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a, it's a fucking society that is fucking grown to not give a fuck about anything. Right. The U.S. is the number one fucking producer of oil now, you know? You tell it to most Americans, they don't even know, because they're like, oh, you know, it's Saudi Arabia, oh, it's this, it's no, you know? We're fracking everywhere, and that's why we're running pipelines fucking everywhere through fucking reservations and everything else. You know? And not giving a fuck. And not giving a damn fuck about anything or anybody. Yep. This is business, they say, you know? Well, we only got one planet. This planet isn't a business. It's a renewable energy source. Provided it is we our fucking <laughs> grand scheme of things, you know? We Some are... of us resent our mothers for one reason or another, and I can understand that, but I can't understand how anybody could resent a fucking planet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when I, before I hurt yet, my back, I, I, I picked like up cash everywhere. Just fucking ignorance is, is okay for most people. Yeah, but they don't stick with that ignorance. They have selective ignorance. When there's somebody that they can take all of their bullshit out on, they remember all of it. Yeah. I mean... Dude, I, I, I pulled a lady out of the snow a couple of days ago here, and... I saw that. Like, I did that so much in Boulder. That's who I was. That's what I did, you know? Save lives. Pick up fucking garbage. I mean, Janine and Derek, they ever tell you how I met them? Probably not. They're both staying in the bottom of the parking garage. You know, the one over, uh, in between Starbucks and the First United Methodist Church? I'm sorry, say it one more time. I said, do you know how I met Derek and Janine? I did not, so once once again against that church. <laughs> Which church? They were in between the First United Methodist Church okay, yeah. and yeah. Starbucks in the bottom of the parking garage. Fucking cold as shit, it was snowing outside. 
So I, I went downstairs and I noticed Janine and Derek were without a blanket and I, I made a mention of it. She really tells the story better than I do, but lo and behold, I told her she was an old lady. She couldn't be out there without a blanket and I went and got her one. And uh, like a, a lot of people don't understand that I need someone to talk to. When I finally get to talk to somebody after not getting to talk to people in such a long time, I end up wanting to do all the talking. Yeah, which fuck is all right, you know? It's I, not. Uh, I worry about, you know, I worry well, about so many people, and I don't, I don't I ask fucking, them because I, I, I got you know. so much help that I need. Yeah. Yeah. But when people ask for my help, I still try. I was gonna, I was gonna drive from here to Nebraska, where I probably would get in trouble for being there because uh i got a friend who's having issues with her husband who's addicted to meth and there's so much more to it than that like all the stuff that i talk about you know touches base on this family and it's it's tough yeah yeah no it's very fucking tough shit straight and, you know, nobody gives a fuck, right? <laughs> you know? I don't know, just the fact that, like, I try harder than most people is enough for most people to be like, oh, he's good. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's, like, that's really the truth, and I mean... I know, tried I just... so much harder than so many people to try to keep a positive attitude no matter what, while everybody was having their fucking breakdown when Veronica broke down, when Janine broke down, when Derek broke down, when all of those people broke down, like, they broke down over shit that I wouldn't. How could I? That's my daily life. But then, like, when I had so much on me that that I broke down, they expected me to be all happy-go-lucky and... and I know you get that. Because you're you're the one who does so much, they expect that you're the one who needs the least. And, and we all need people, you know? We all need people to, to care about us, to love us, and we, we need people to love. Some yeah. people love themselves, and don't get me wrong, that's, that's not wrong. But to be in love with yourself, that's different. I love who I am, I'm a wonderful person, and... You know, there's a lot of people that may not agree, but the people who know me should know better. All these people that judged me, judged me for their own personal opinions about a Sean that doesn't exist, you know? And then, like that guy at work who's an asshole every single fucking day, you know? Everybody's like, whatever, he's just a dick. But then the good guy comes into work one day, and he's just having a really bad fucking day and says one bad fucking thing, and they fucking fire his ass. Yeah, no, and it's, it's all right to just be a fucking prick by nature, but, you know, if life fucking hits you hard one day, it's not okay. Exactly. That's fucked. It really is. If it was my choice, you know, and people don't understand this, if it was my choice, Natalie wouldn't be dead. I wanted my life to end because of how I was being treated. Because I couldn't go see people in Boulder. And then they were getting pissed off and typing mean shit at me like I, I was some sort of terrible excuse for a human being. And I didn't wrong any of them. Yeah. Oh, man, that's fucked. You never deserved it, you know? I'm trying to think of somebody down there in Boulder that I screwed over ever, and I'm... I'm drawing a fucking blank. I mean, I can think of people in Chapel that I screwed over. You know, even a couple of them I screwed over intentionally. You know, I was younger, I was fucking vengeful, and I was going through fucking hell, and yeah, you know, I didn't necessarily do the nicest things, but it took a lot of really mean stuff for me to get like that. But I'm not like that anymore, you know? Like, it got to the point where I had to pretend to be like that 
so that I can posture enough that people would leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. If if I had a a place in Colorado, you'd be welcome. But that that doesn't mean anything because I don't have a place. If Natalie hadn't died, I'd already set it aside so that I would have the money. By March or April of last year, I should have had the money to get some property. I was going to buy a house for Megan Christie for 7000 And I was also hoping to get that property over by uh, San Juan County. I wasn't sure which one I wanted to get, but I... Either one would have worked, you know? Somewhere where I can invite my friends and not be walked over because it's mine. Finally, after forever. Yeah. Yeah. And you, like, you're you're not allowed to have bad days either. Yeah. No, man, I'm, I'm a goddamn fucking walking pretzel in the mind and in the body, and yet... If I ever try to even fucking loosen out some of that fucking tension, it's generally like a fucking explosion of fucking tension, and it's just, yeah, no, I, I literally fucking knock myself up like a pretzel, and I don't even know how to deal with it some days, but, <laughs> but I don't have a choice not to, so, or at least, uh, you know, at least it doesn't feel like it. I've been trying not to completely melt down forever. I understand being in knock. Yeah. My back still fucks me up. Yeah. On uh, the bright fuck, side. This morning I woke up. I don't even know what I did. I woke up at five. I felt great. I d- didn't really have to wake up. It's like 6.30, 6.40, you know? And I was like, all right, well, fuck, you know, I'll sleep in a little bit. I went back to sleep. I woke up like an hour later. Fucking wow, like a goddamn pretzel. Like I slept fucking... Arching my neck 180 degrees, you know? Yeah. It just fucking felt terrible. I didn't even know what the fuck was going on, but yeah, it was, you know, my neck still hurts right now thinking about it, but I kind of just worked through it and it, it went away. But, or at least the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the full on concept of the pain went away because I just fucking tried to ignore it, you know? I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, when you sent me that text saying you was worried about me, that's... Thank you. Absolutely. I appreciate freaking the same regard, you know. You know, a lot of people got pissed off and just ditched me because they didn't like what I was saying, but most of it wasn't directed at them. It was just me trying to get it out there, you know? Like, the, it's not that nobody tried to help, you know? It's that they couldn't help where I needed it. You know, I, I needed a lawyer, and I needed an advocate, and, you know, it ended up being, without those things, I was just in constant need of rescue, you know? Brandon, come rescue me from the snow. The cops don't have my computer here. They're not going to give it to me, so please come rescue me from the fucking McDonald's. And you did. Oh, fuck, I, yeah. I, I needed people to go into court with me, and I, I needed an advocate so that the, you know, even my own public pretenders railroaded me. Yeah. They all did things that are not only immoral, but illegal. Yeah. And they pulled those nasty little tricks. I need a lawyer to fight that, you know? I I need people to to write their local senator, write their local governor, write every one of these jurisdictions and say, hey, this is fucked. You know, the Bollingers and their crazies did that to me, but I couldn't get my friends to write a letter for nine fucking months. You know? I mean, at least, at least with Veronica, I, I expected the way that she was, you know? She has a bad day, she takes it out on somebody. 
you know, a lot of the things yeah, she said. She also, things. just as a general disregard, I don't know if you ever knew Luna. Yeah. I don't know even what, you, what, you know, your relationship is or ever was with Luna, but I, I, I was know just talking to her it, actually but... recently, and she was saying that Veronica and her ex-boyfriend in 2017, probably around the time I was still there, were fucking hitting on each other in all kinds of different ways, and fucking, yeah. Yeah, I noticed... I, I didn't even know about that, but... Veronica never seemed like she was attracted to me like that, which made it a lot easier to hang out with her. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't get hints, and when a woman thinks that you're not interested and you're throwing her away, you know, they, they do some pretty vindictive stuff. Not all of them, but... You know, so it, I liked hanging out with lesbians because I knew they weren't going to take it that way. They weren't just going to assume that I was there for, because I'm not interested in that shit. I want to cuddle, you know. But I don't ask for a woman for that. I'd, I'd rather have a dog. Dogs aren't mean to me. You know, if if you get a dog a purple chew toy instead of a pink one, they're not going to fucking flip their shit on you. <laughs> you don't love me. You got me a purple one instead of a pink one. I'm sorry. Yeah. I take it back. Yeah, really. Yeah. When you guys, uh... When my car broke down on the little Bighorn River and you guys came all the way up to get me. Like, you know, I, I still tell that story. I still, all these people who treated me like shit and can't remember anything good that I ever did for them now somehow magically. I remember all the good things they did for me, you know? I remember all the good shit that Derek did for me. I remember all the good shit that... Veronica did for me, and, you know, and you, you still talk to me, but I remember the good shit that you did for me, too, I mean, everything from the swap meet, to coming and picking me up at fucking, in the snow, to taking me to where Miss Peaches works, to coming and seeing me at the park over there, across from the 29th Street Mall, you know? Like, I remember all of those things. Yeah. It was at the skate park. And people treat me like I'm I'm ungrateful or like I I never did anything for them. And in a lot of cases, you know, that's that's close to true, you know. With Veronica when she was younger, I always Wished that I could do more to help her, but she was a little kid, you know. I was there hanging out with Janine and Derek, who were both adults. She was there hanging out with Derek because they were friends, and they were very close to the same age, you know. I mean, I... And then when she became an adult, you know, it's like, cool, we can be friends now. But she's, she's very opinionated. When she gets it in her head, it's a certain way. She's a lot like my dad. She's very bullheaded about it and gets very in your face about it and pushy with it. And you have to take it. And because of her size, you really have to take it. And then you feel bad and you really don't have any reason to feel bad. You're not the one who just waked out over nothing. But she's tiny, you know. And I always feel bad when I, I scream back at somebody who's tiny. Yeah. So what are you doing now? I'm uh, sitting on my, my bed. I'm texting a little bit between a couple different people. Right. One of them's freaking out, but yeah, I, uh, I am bouncing kind of between Car Lake and my, my, my mom and my dad's house. I want to go back to Longmont. Yeah. Tabby lives on the other end of town, but Miss Peaches lives pretty close to pretty close to Miss Veronica. You remember uh, 
you you probably wouldn't. You remember a few years back when uh, DJ and Desiree got all stabbed up in the mountains over a dog? Probably not, but they live over there too. Not Desiree, but DJ and Melissa. I'm sorry, I just got freaking blown up. But I, I figured. Could, could I uh, ask you to repeat yourself? You're good, I wasn't actually talking. I was just listening. I really wanted that S10, and even though I, I didn't get it, like... You know, I, I thought I was going to get a pickup and I was going to be able to take my tools and I'd be able to, you know, do the handyman thing, go fix things and make people's lives better. And then yeah. all that money that was for that pickup <laughs> truck, the day before my birthday, finding out we were kicked out, you know, that and I spent all of my money to move us. Josh said he was going to help and he. God, getting him to help was like, so I paid other people to help us because I, I needed people that were actually going to do something. All of my money for that pickup was gone, paid for the rental and the storage, put his stuff in there too, you know, yeah. and then his parents bailed him out of it and he spent all of his money on drugs and alcohol and trying to get laid, and trying to impress girls. Which is not an effective way to go about it, anyways. Well, it worked. No. You feed girls drugs this day and age, you can get them to do a lot of stuff. It's treating them decent that'll get you fucked. Fucked over, I mean. I know a lot of good men, most of them are single. Most of the women that I know are attracted to dangerous men. Like, yeah, you know, he's just as dangerous as you, right? So I, I need to see my loved ones, I need to be able to interact with them. And, and I don't get to. I, I don't fucking get to because of shit that I didn't do. I, I did finally have to do some law breaking, but you remember Ken and Leah's? Remember who? I'm sorry. Ken and Leah, the place where when you helped me move out of chapel. The place oh, yeah. that you moved me to, and then yeah. when we moved out over all that yeah. stuff over to Tabby's. Yeah. yeah, they're the ones that, that ripped me off for all that money. Huh. Huh. Getting my phone, though, like, that was the important thing, is getting that flip phone, you know? Yeah. I got it, at least. And thank you for that, by the way. It... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, everybody acts like fucking anything is inconvenient for them, but at the same time, like, you know, it really, you know, in, in the moment of moving all that shit, it almost did seem inconvenient, but really looking back on it, like, I didn't feel like, you know, fuck, it was, it was a day, if that, no. Well, you got paid and you got food. You got Sorry. something productive done. I said you got paid and you got food. You got something productive done. That's all positive, usually. Yeah, I freaking enjoyed all of it, you know? I'm just saying, you know, you, you analyze things in life sometimes, or everybody, or I feel like I do at least. Analyze things in life is like, oh, you know, fuck this, no, you're pain in the ass, but nothing's ever as bad as you almost imagine it could be or whatever, you know? Uh, for me, it's as bad as I imagine it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this situation, I, I knew, I knew exactly where it was going. When I left Virginia, I already knew that she didn't have long and she didn't have someone like me in her life. It, not necessarily me. It could have been anybody who's genuinely not a piece of shit. 
But then the predators in her life wouldn't leave me alone. I begged her to ask the dogs to stop. I begged nicely to begin with. You know, I, I was hit in the head over a hundred times last year. Holy crap. That's what happens when people you think that you're a child molester, a rapist, a killer, and a stalker. I couldn't get anybody to sit down and listen to the whole thing, and more things kept getting added to it. I needed to go after the Boulder Police Department as soon as they did what they did. Instead, they kept on sending me to places that did worse things to me to make sure that I couldn't. And I couldn't make a report against any of them. They wouldn't let me. You know what? I lied to people. I did. Before all of this happened, I definitely lied to people. If there was a punchline, or if I got information incorrect, I didn't lie to people on purpose. And everybody gets stuff wrong. But, like, I was literally the most honest person that I know. And afterwards, there was a couple of situations where I did lie. I lied and said that I would kill the president. And I lied and said that I would kill the people who were threatening to kill my family and my friends. I'm not actually okay with killing people. My number one goal in life is not to kill anyone, not even on accident. When I get on the phone, like, all I can do is talk. We're not doing anything interactive. We're not, we're not building anything. We're not, we're not playing card games. We're not. We're not doing any of the R and R stuff that that I need. I hope you get to. Oh fuck! I, I'd like to imagine. <laughs> right. imagine what I even really need. It's, yeah. I need a dog. I, I need to cuddle. I need to feel loved. And dogs love you no matter what. You know. That's it. Honestly, my dog is my best friend in the world. But at the same time, I'm always so fucking busy. I'm never here for him. In Virginia, when all of those people threw me away, Miss Jerry and all of them, Miss Lisa, she was so good to me. She said, uh, Sean, you just need to be loved. And she was right. But I, I needed that love in person. I didn't need sex, I didn't need pretty scenery, I didn't need any of that, I just, I just needed a friend, you know, I mean, in Virginia, it was so fucked up, so many people died while I was, and I found out people who had died, like, a couple of months before while I was there, you know, like, why, why didn't anybody tell me two months ago? When I found out Barry was dead, that that freaked me out. He'd been dead for two years. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not doing okay. But getting to talk to people helps. And getting to hear your voice helps. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, it definitely makes sense. I feel like all that we fucking ever really want from any any other living creature is to fucking be acknowledged in, in a way that's not fucking shit, you know? Be appreciated and fucking respected, and, you know? Especially at least those of us who can respect each other, you know? I think that that's how otherwise life forms should freaking act. Do you remember how I was? Yeah. I wasn't a bad guy. You know, I was funny. I was happy. Yeah. And even when I was having a bad day, I did my best not to show people that. I did my best to try to be happy no matter what. And now I got all these people who haven't been through this quantity of hell alone. 
telling me I'm not allowed to feel that way. I'm I have to be happy. And I'm like, I We need other people to to make us feel loved. Like there's a purpose to being here, to make it worth going through all of this shit. Yeah. And and I don't I don't have anybody. I mean, I got people who are miles away that I don't get to see. They got families. They can't just uproot and come see me. And then they don't understand what this kind of loneliness is because they they have people there. I, I learned that uh, if I'm good to people, I'm easily forgotten. But the people who abuse them, they'll keep around. Yeah. Really, though? You know, I, I treated these people like shit because I was being assaulted. And I was having my life threatened. If it weren't for the assaults, the threats wouldn't matter. They still pissed me off, but they would have just been threats. I just wanted to go see my older brother. I wanted to see Mowgli. I wanted to see Christine. I wanted to see my friends Boulder without being assaulted. And that's not too much to ask when you didn't do what you're being assaulted for. I didn't rape anybody. I didn't molest anybody. I didn't stalk anybody. I'm, I'm separated from everybody that I love, and it's driving me crazy, and then they keep on punishing me for fucking going crazy by further cutting me off from people that I love, and punishing me financially and physically. I don't know if, uh... If you can write a letter to the governor or senators or whoever, but because of the mentally ill thing, that's literally why I needed somebody there in person to go talk to the police with me. I can't do it myself. They punish me. Every single time, over 30 times that I tried to talk to the police, I was either shrugged off or assaulted. Which is fucked. And honestly, they treat my older brother the exact same way. I know. He was fucking, he was assaulted and beaten in Louisville. And this fucking lady cop virtually charged him with, like, tried to charge him, rather, with aggravated assault, but it was removed because he was, you know, provably mental at that point. You know, you know provably not necessarily in fucking reality per se but he virtually looked at the lady and he you know i mean it's very unusual for a guy who's been you know incredibly nice to women his entire life but he said something like you know you look like a man this that like you're you know like i don't know he said something weird to her and she got like incredibly fucking offended and virtually they all threw him to the ground and fucking pounded their knees into him and shit and handcuffed him and fucking smacked the shit out of him and fucking told told frickin' the story was that he fucking assaulted her. See, and they probably didn't even look at the body cams. They probably didn't even have body cams. I know your brother. You know, when I was down there, he, he got blanket from me a couple of times. Not because he needed them, he just was wandering around, I guess. But I, I didn't know he was your brother until that day that you and I went to, to Boulder to pick him up. Yeah. And I didn't see him but once every great while. I mean, he didn't, like, hang out with the homeless people or anything like that, you know? I mean, a, a little bit if, if somebody engaged him in conversation, but like for the most part, you know, he, 
If I did see him, I saw him up on the hill. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember all these things. I don't get to forget them. You know, the, the worst part is the isn't the bad memories, the bad messed up stuff that happened. It's the good memories, and the, those hurt too, you know? Like, the... When I went to Virginia, nobody had ever treated me like that. Nobody. Nobody had ever... She was one of the best listeners, if not the best listener I knew other than myself at the time. I needed help, though. I had to stop listening to others and start begging for help. When when they needed help, I came running. When I needed help, I got words on Facebook. I got lashed at and told I need to get a job, and I need to this, and I need to do that, and you know what? The get a job thing, I, I've heard that since I turned 18, even if I had a job, you know? And I, I know that I'm, I went bald at 16, so I've had to listen to the you look like a child molester thing since I was 18. Oh, I'm just tired of it, you know? I, I want to go see my loved ones without them having to be afraid that the cops are going to harm them for harboring me. I shouldn't be a fugitive. I was treated like a fugitive all of last year. I, uh, you know, this whole time, I've held on to probably enough for, you know, maybe a down payment and freaking land once my credit's good enough. And I honestly want to not only freaking make a down payment on the house that I can rent the better portion of, but I want someone to buy a piece of land. The whole time I've been thinking to myself about freaking welcoming me on said land or, you know, even in said house. If you set up GoFundMe, you might be able to make some money off of it. I, I had some GoFundMes, but some of them were started by other people for me and they... They got the wrong idea and didn't bother talking to me about it before making rash decisions. When I made the last one, it expired on my birthday. I said it for like three months out. You know how many dollars were in it when it expired? Zero. Not one person donated. Meanwhile, the son of a bitch who raped his own daughter... They gave him a bunch of money for the funeral. He went to Boston with it. Just fucked. Yeah, he wanted to go watch some sports games or some shit. Natalie was wonderful, you know? Like, actually a wonderful person. And people said she was an evil twin, but she, she wanted to speak too, and she never got to. When I was in Virginia, I listened to Alicia every single day, you know, she, she's the one who asked me to come park behind her work and stay there because it was closer. And she'd call me at lunchtime to say, hey, Sean, you know, I'm, I'm going out to have lunch. Sean, it's, it's my lunch break. You should uh, come visit with me. Sean, I'm going out for a cigarette break. Come on over. But I didn't. I got to hang out with Natalie a couple of times one-on-one. -on -one. We got like five minutes at the beach because them boys were busy chasing Alicia. We got five minutes at Elliot's Coffee Grounds because Alicia had to go to the bathroom. We got five minutes at the uh, pagoda in Norfolk because her sister ran to the car to get her purse. But other than that, you know, every... Every time that Natalie got to see me, Alicia had to be there. And I I was fine with that as long as Natalie got to speak, but she, she never did. Uh, 
I, uh, there's a lot of people who want to help me, but they're all paranoid of each other because of everything that went on. And, you know, there was a lot of internet crazies that were pretending to be my friend that ended not being. And there was a lot of internet crazies who pretended to be these people's friends because they wanted the inside scoop and, you know, basically to find something they could twist into whatever. And everybody just got paranoid. So I got to try to get them to coordinate with each other because, like, the truth needs to be known. It's not just me that this happened to. And it's not just Natalie that these things happened. Her sister probably went through the same shit. Her and her sister were both addicted to heroin. I don't know if they're both doing it now. So I want my life to... What? I said so many damn people I knew or grew up with or still know are afflicted by fucking heroin. Right? Heroin and fucking <laughs> mess. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, if I can't see my loved ones, I'm eventually going to get to the point where I'd... I have to talk myself out of suicide every moment of every day. I have to tell myself that somebody's going to care to make these people stop. Somebody's going to see me as a human being and, and want to help me find a way to make these people stop. But You know, every, every day I, I lose hope and I, I need actual help. You know, I, I needed to be able to see my therapist. And they prevented me from being able to do that by charging me with crimes I didn't commit, preventing me from leaving the state, eating up all of my money with fucking booking fees and fucking court fees and fucking traveling and... And then they said that I wasn't trying. I'm going to let you go. There's a, a gentleman here who's uh, he's homeless and it's raining. I'm going to let him uh... go, bro. Yeah, yeah, give me just a minute. I'm, I'm finishing up the phone call. I'll open the door I for you. I'm talking to you first. I, just, I seen you when you first started and I seen you when you were talking. Yes, sir. I'm good, Mr. Carlos. You still there? Yeah, he's, I guess he's just on his way to the store. I, I ran out of tobacco, so I got a aluminum pipe. I made out of aluminum foil, so I probably look like a crackhead smoking out here in the parking lot. You know, I, I, I know... I knew when I was 18 that I wasn't going to fit in because I wasn't willing to have sex with drunk women, and I wasn't willing to mess with drugs to try to get laid, and I knew that most of the women that I've met in my life, starting when they were young, 14, 15, 16 years of age, start falling in love with meth and heroin, or getting drunk, you know, that, that's what it is that's fun to them. If it's something you're not supposed to do, then that's what's fun. If it's something that's dangerous, that's what's fun. These women don't realize that it's not just them they're putting at risk. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. I I I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I, I need an address and a place, you know, like an address where I can get stuff sent to and a place where I can lay my head and not get fucked with. Not have to hear constant screaming. Not be told what a fuck up I am because I don't have any money, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, before too long, I should be uh, capable. 
so fuck you. Yeah. I don't feel like it's my right to ever offer something that's not mine, unless I'm there for I'm not capable yet, but, you know. Yeah, I do know. You know, that's the thing, is if I'd have had the money for that property, you know, it would have taken me maybe, maybe two weeks, even with a fucked up back, it might have maybe taken me two weeks to build enough shelters there out of the natural terrain to house one or two families. Of course, if it was back when I had a good back, I could have done it in a couple of days. It's not difficult to make something that's functional enough for you to survive in until you build something decent, you know? Anyway, I'm uh, running out of battery on all my appliances. I'm going to have to turn on the car. I won't be able to hear you. Can I call you tomorrow? Yeah, uh, absolutely. My phone's sitting here fucking dying, too. It's half of the freaking beeping up in heaven. Right? Yeah. Well, I love you, Brandon. Be safe, all right? Yeah, hey, I love you, too. Thank be you safe for everything. Too, I will. Yeah. Bye.